Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcasting to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. The tense situation between Israel and the Palestinians has escalated over the weekend with four separate attacks reported against Israeli troops and infrastructure. In response, the Israeli Air Force targeted five Hamas posts across the Gaza Strip. New revelations emerged on a multilateral task force for the purpose of removing foreign forces from Syria in which Damascus officials may join their Israeli and Russian counterparts along with other elements. The United States Consulate General in Jerusalem formally closed after 175 years of service and merged with the U.S. Embassy into a single diplomatic mission. The tense situation on Israel's southern frontier has escalated over the weekend. Today and on Saturday, Palestinian Islamists launched clusters of balloons carrying explosive devices from the Gaza Strip toward Israeli territory. The IDF spokesperson's unit told TV7 that no injuries or damage were caused in either incident. In response, the Israeli Air Force retaliated by targeting four Hamas posts in the southern Gaza Strip. Less than 12 hours after the Saturday attack, two unarmed Palestinians were arrested by IDF forces after crossing into Israel from the northern part of the enclave. The IDF transferred them to the Israeli security agency Shin Bet for questioning. Shortly thereafter, a group of Palestinians hurled explosive devices at the security barrier that separates between the Hamas-run territory and the Jewish state. While no injuries were reported, the border fence sustained minor damage. In response to this incident, the IDF spokesperson's unit told TV7 that an Air Force aircraft targeted a Hamas installation in the northern part of the Palestinian Strip. An Israeli military source reiterated in a conversation with TV7 that any incident in which Palestinians seek to terrorize Israel, the terror group Hamas that controls them, will be held solely accountable. The source further noted the fact that Hamas successfully thwarted dozens of attacks against Israel since reaching an Egyptian-brokered ceasefire arrangement indicates clearly that they control the situation and that any time that it suits them, they allow their members and supporters to use means of terror against Israel. Now to the West Bank. In what the IDF classified as a nationalistically motivated vehicular attack, a Palestinian-licensed vehicle rammed into Israeli forces near the West Bank village of Neila critically wounding an officer and lightly injuring another. The attack occurred when an Israeli military patrol was forced to stop their vehicle on the roadside due to technical failure some 10 kilometers northwest of the Palestinian city of Ramallah. After the soldiers disembarked from their vehicle, a Palestinian car reportedly accelerated before ramming into the troops. The Israeli force responded by opening fire at the Palestinian vehicle, killing two of its occupants, while lightly wounding a third. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu commended the IDF troops for their prompt response to the act of Palestinian terror. During a joint press conference in Jerusalem with his visiting Samoan counterpart, Netanyahu stressed that Jerusalem will act to speed up demolition of the homes of terrorists as part of Jerusalem's measures of deterrence and will continue to act with determination in Israel's vigorous struggle against terrorism everywhere. <laughs> ברכות להחלמה מהירה לקצין הפצוע וגם נעשה כל דבר כדי לזרז את הריסת הבתים של המרצחים הללו. Now in other news, Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu reiterated Jerusalem's determination to continue its military actions against Iran's efforts to entrench itself militarily in Israel's northern neighbor, Syria. During his weekly cabinet meeting, the Prime Minister notified his ministers of his meeting last week with Russian President Vladimir Putin, which focused on the Iranian issue. <laughs> כפי שהבטחתי, מוקד הדיונים בינינו היה הנושא האיראני. 
אני הבהרתי בצורה חד משמעית שישראל לא תאפשר את ההתבססות הצבאית של איראן בסוריה, והבהרתי חד משמעית שאנחנו נמשיך לפעול צבאית נגדה. While the Prime Minister reiterated his agreement with the Russian President to continue maintaining the security coordination mechanism between their respective militaries, with the declared aim of avoiding friction during Israeli operations on Syrian territory, Netanyahu also pointed to an unprecedented agreement between Moscow and Jerusalem to establish a joint team that will work to advance a joint Russian-Israeli goal of removing foreign forces from Syria. אנחנו סיכמנו על המשך מנגנון התיאום הביטחוני בין צבא רוסיה וצה"ל והנשיא פוטין ואני הסכמנו גם על יעד משותף הוצאת הכוחות הזרים מסוריה שהגיעו לסוריה לאחר פרוץ מלחמת האזרחים ואנחנו סיכמנו להקים צוות משותף שיפעל לקדם את המטרה הזאת יחד עם גורמים אחרים As vaguely mentioned by Prime Minister Netanyahu, other elements will join Israeli National Security Advisor Meir Ben Shabbat and his Russian counterpart Nikolai Patrushev in the formation of a multilateral task force that aims at removing foreign forces from Syria. Sources told TV7 on condition of anonymity that President Putin has demanded of Prime Minister Netanyahu that alongside their respective representatives, additional officials will participate in the refer to task force, including senior officials from the Assad regime. It is important to note, however, that neither the Israeli Prime Minister's office nor the Russian President's spokesman agreed to elaborate on their previous statements to TV7 pertaining to last week's meeting. Now to another matter. Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu held a telephone conversation with his British counterpart Theresa May, during which he thanked her for London's decision to define all branches of the Lebanese group Hezbollah as a terrorist organization. In remarks the Israeli leader made on the matter, he called on other countries to follow in Britain's footsteps. <laughs> אל מחוץ לחוק, להגדיר אותו כארגון טרור את כל חלקי חיזבאללה. זו החלטה חשובה משום שחיזבאללה הוא מחולל טרור בפני עצמו והוא גם זרוע טרור מרכזית של איראן. ואני קורא למדינות אחרות באירופה, קודם כל באירופה, אבל גם בעולם, להצטרף למהלך החשוב הזה של בריטניה. British authorities said their decision came after they could no longer distinguish between Hezbollah's political and military arms. That is why anyone with links to either branch of the terror group could face jail terms of up to 10 years. It is important to note, however, that contrary to the United States, Canada and Israel that already blacklisted the Iranian proxy Hezbollah, the European Union continues to maintain its position in which it differentiates between the military arm of the Shiite organization and its political branch that has three active ministers within Lebanon's government. Now in other news, the United States Consulate General in Jerusalem formally closed after 175 years of service and merged with the U.S. Embassy into a single diplomatic mission. Since the 1990s Oslo Accords, the American Consulate had essentially served as an unofficial embassy to the Palestinian Authority, actively providing services to Palestinians in the West Bank, Gaza Strip and East Jerusalem residents, among other residents of Israel and the Palestinian territories. While the U.S. State Department insisted in a statement that there will be complete continuity of U.S. diplomatic activity and consular services during and after the merger, the Palestinian Authority views the move as a de facto downgrading of relations. Chief Palestinian negotiator Saeed Barakat stressed that sentiment in a condemning response saying the Trump administration was giving the final burial to its role of establishing peace in the region. The foreign ministry in Jerusalem did not immediately respond to TV7's request for comment on the matter. Thank you for watching us. Praying for the peace of Israel and the peace of Jerusalem. Jonathan Hassan, have a Erev Tov and Shabbat Tov, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.